дээд тэнгийн найз охин хагалгаанд орчих гэн гинэ хагалгаанд орхос нөмөн охино бүгд үзүүлмээр байна гэд чи иддэн 17 муу балэр лөөрч the inspiration for the film came from an um, a, a real life encounter i had with the shaman um, I was taken to a shaman by my mother, so that part of the film is based on reality. And uh, of course, I was running late, so I went to the ritual um, while it, it had already happened. Or I went to the ritual while it was already happening. And so I attended this um, ritual with other people, and I spoke to the ancestral spirit, and after the ritual, I was waiting for my mother when this young man when this young man came and sat next to me on the couch and um, he was younger than me about 19 20 years old i think he was like a freshman in university and he had full sleeve tattoos on both arms and he had an earring he was super cool and i i was thinking that you know i didn't see this young man in the um, ritual i wonder who he is and after we left, actually, my mother told me that he was the shaman. And so it was this encounter or this re-encounter with this, with this shaman um, that inspired the film about seeing this young man um, in this dual identity, being a shaman with an ancestral spirit and also um, a very um, cool 19, 20 year old young man with tattoos and um, and so this encounter and re-encounter inspired um, the film. Um, from the very beginning, um, as I was writing the script and trying to formulate the story, um, I think it, it became clear to me that I could not make a film about contradiction, about how tradition was conflicting with uh, modernity and how this uh, protagonist, this young man, has to make a choice between his spirits, between his ancestors, and you know, modern life and his love. So, I mean, if it was to be a very, very, I think, classical film about tradition, you know, he has to make that ultimate choice. And that didn't feel very authentic to me, um, especially being a young Mongolian myself and living um, with tradition and within modernity, I, I don't feel like I have to make this ultimate choice and that defines who I am. I feel like I'm living with everything all at once, all together. And so this film was important to me in the sense that I'm trying to portray modern Mongol Mongolian life as, um, as not a contradiction, but as something like balancing. There were several, I think, aspects about Zay's life. Um, first of all is the tradition, it's, it's his connection and relationship to the ancestral life, ancestral um, spirits and relationships. Um, there's also his relationship to his future, to the city, to all the aspirations that his family and his school has for him. So he's really a young man who is caught between the past and the future and at the very beginning of the film he's very focused on carrying these two things but what happens when he meets Marla and goes through this um, experience of love is he finally is able to experience the present moment and so what I tried to do is to introduce Ze, the character um, in relation to um, other people, his community, his role within society, 
um, what other people dream for him, uh, what other people expect of him. So even in relation to this, the camera is always kind of finding him and then connecting him to the larger society or the camera is wide and then you kind of slowly pinpoint him amongst the group. But when he falls in love with Marla, this is the part in the film when he's really um, letting go of the past and the future and only starting to exist within the present moment and the camera is more fluid, it's following him, it's more connected to him as a person and not about discovering him within the community. So for me, the, the whole love story and his discovery is um, about the discovery of the present moment. And all of this is something that we must go through um, as part of our growing up experience, I think. Especially in adolescence and young adult life, there is a big focus on the body, on, on, on feelings, on emotions, and we have to go through this in order to become the responsible, more mature adults in life. And, um, and so it's, it's like, it's, it's a cliche to a certain extent, but the thing is there is truth to cliches, right? Cliches are based on, on, on truth. And um, we just have to find our angle of how we're gonna work with these cliches. And, and so um, that's it. I mean, Zay is just a normal teenager going to clubs and having sex and falling in love and being lost and confused and all of the, the classic things that happens in, in teenagehood. Music was a big learning experience for me. Um, one of the things that was becoming apparent as I was finishing up the film um, was the fact that I didn't approach spirituality in a direct way, in the sense that when people think of shamanism and spirituality, they really want to see something a little bit fantastic, a little bit um, out, out of worldly, but my intention was to focus on, on shamanism as a part of daily life. And so there was this, I, I felt that there was this feeling of um, wanting to make the spirituality felt without showing it in some kind of fantastical way. And this is where music became really, really important because um, just in the moments when I want to give a hint that this is where you have to really think about the spirituality, where you have to feel the spirituality, I put, you know, with the music composer Vashko Mindon, so we put this very tiny, minimal, um, just a reminder that there is, even as we're just seeing the daily normal life of teenagers, there's always this um, feeling of spirituality that is part of our existence. And so music really became, I think, one of the ways where I can remind people very softly and gently that this film is actually about spirits, <laughs> not just about teenagers, you know. I wrote the script for this film when I was doing my master's program in Kino Eyes at uh, Lausanne University. So um, I would say the beginning of this project is, is set in Lausanne on this campus. And, um, you know, I was doing a master's in screenwriting. So as I'm kind of going through my studies, I'm also shaping um, the story and the script for the film. And when I graduated uh, my master's, I had the the first draft of the script ready. And so um, I think uh, Lausanne University, I think being a teacher makes me very, very critical of myself. Um, for the better and for the worse. Pinpoint um, the film, not from my own personal perspective as a filmmaker, but I'm also looking at it outside from a more academic, more study perspective. Um, I would say that it's a, very, it's, it's a bit difficult at times to have this double perspective, but it's also a very um, 
how can I say, it's, it's a privilege to also be able to have this um, second perspective. So I would say like being an academic, you know, working or being a part of a university environment and always talking about film from an academic perspective just makes me very tough on myself and very um, um, rigorous. I think rigorous is a good uh, word for it. Well, it was actually because of the program, Hino Eyes because I had heard such good things about Doc Nomads, the documentary program. Mm -hmm. um, when I learned that um, there was a fiction version of Doc Nomads, I went straight for it. I, went, I, I applied immediately because, um, because it's, it's such a special program. You know, Kino Eyes is something that, that's, that you cannot find in any other type of master's program. It's... Um, it's, it's very much a workshop, I would say, and it's not, it, there's a big practice aspect of it, there's a big the theoretical aspect of it, I think. With, so it was, I think, the, um, the perfect place for me to continue my studies. And I think it's hard to say what advice I would give. Uh, for me, I would say, you know, I had, it, as far as university goes, as far as studies goes, um, I know it's a you know university is a place to study and learn and uh, you know it's about books and uh, but really for me university life has always been about finding um, I would say like my soulmates in cinema because everywhere that I've gone whether it's a program or just a workshop or it's university or it's a course um, it's not about particularly about studying, it's about finding, I think, that person who can be your friend, your cinematic friend, because it's very difficult to find um, people who have the same tastes and the people who have the same vision. And it's such a beautiful thing when you find it. It's difficult, but when you have it, it's like a friendship. That, that really lasts forever because it's not a friendship that like you speak every day and but you know I have made friends I think also as part of Lozofna University with the Kino Eyes program but with other workshops and different courses and things like that. Um, what I value the most is like the people that I can call when I, I'm when I need to talk to somebody about something very cinematic and very specific right so I value those friendships and I value those relationships so much. And my advice for students studying is to say, of course you can study, but it's really about finding your soulmate. It also was a huge decision on my part because um, my mother is a doctor and I was expected to kind of carry on the tradition and I always thought that I would become a doctor actually. But after I graduated high school and it was time for me to choose, um, I realized I actually didn't know anything other than film because I had spent my childhood and my adolescence obsessively watching films. Truth is, I was just not happy in any of these fields. I was only happy when I was watching films and thinking about films and talking about films. And this is, I think, part of the reason is that, you know, I was a very, like, emotionally stifled child. I was not allowed because of my culture and background, but also because of my family. I wasn't allowed to express anything I was feeling. And I think films was the only way I could understand what I was feeling and what I was going through emotionally. And it's my imaginary. It's part of my... It's part of my past, and it's, it's inside. And so I, I can access these emotions and these memories and these thoughts and ideas very easily. Whereas if I were to make a film in Portugal, I don't have all these memories, and I don't have all of the, the connections that I can very easily have for Mongolia. One thing about I will say about being Mongolian is be about adaptation. 
Mongolians are very, very sturdy, adaptive people. We learn very quickly and we immediately adapt to the environment. And this is coming from, you know, the nomadic culture where you basically your whole existence is somehow adapting to nature and making sure that you are part of nature. Um, and so I think on set or while I'm making films, whether it's in, well, it's in, whether it's in the writing or whether I'm on set, this aspect of being Mongolian, being very um, able to adapt very quickly um, has a huge um, impact and it, I think it makes me a better person, for sure. I mean, generally speaking, for the, I mean, if I have to speak about the international audience, right? Because for me, there's two things. There's the Mongolian audience and then there's the international audience. And somehow in my head, I separate that. Because for Mongolians, watching this film is a completely different experience than, you know, for the international audience. And I think for the international audience, what I hope that is that they get a glimpse into Mongolia um, and try to start having memories about Mongolia that is not just like National Geographic imagery of horses and eagles and nature and nomads. I think I want the Mongolians to have their place in the, in the imaginary of the world. If we think of the world as, um, as having its own memories and own ideas as one entity, um, with this film, I hope that I can um, make a small part of that, of that uh, global brain, of that global memory. And I want the international audience to hear the Mongolian language. I want people to get used to what it sounds like. I want people to get used to how the Mongolians look like, our faces. Um, I just want people to be aware that there is a country out there with people like this, with a culture like this, with, um, and a people who take care of each other, who, who um, behave um, in intimate ways with nature and with ancestors and spirits. And um, yeah, it's about taking, taking up space, I think. You know, I want this film to take space in people's brains and in people's times and days, you know. So I hope, I really appreciate the people who really take time out of their, their day to come and watch it because that's, that's what I want ultimately, is just for the film to exist in people's, people's brains, you know.